Hey there, I'm gonna show you how to make some powerful boss weapons in Lies of P. I'm also gonna show you some of my personal favorites and how to use them. Uh, but first, uh, hold on a sec. Just take a moment, promise. Uh, okay, let's go. To find the NPC to start crafting boss weapons, you're gonna have to be in chapter four of the campaign. That's about a third of the way in. And you're gonna have to go to the St. Frangelico Cathedral Library Stargazer. All right, from here, you're gonna take a left, go through here. You're gonna see a little trap on the ground. Don't step on that. Under the bridge, goo balls are gonna fall. Watch out for those. Gonna go back up over the bridge, take a right. Then down here, you're gonna see this poisonous decay area. Go through there to the left. And then you're gonna find this room with this big glowy light and an elevator at the end. Now there is like a big aggressive guy, you can choose to kill him here or just avoid him. You're gonna find Alidoro up here, this cool looking dog mask guy. And he's gonna craft boss items for you with rare ergo, the things that drop when you kill a boss, or it's kind of like a boss soul. And here it's gonna show you all the stuff you can craft with your current ergo. And some of these are weapons, some of them are amulets. These have strong effects, but they're very heavy. Look at their weight. These can be heavier than your weapons sometimes, so up to you if you want to go for those or a weapon. If you tell this guy about the hotel, after you beat the boss of this area, he's going to go back to the hotel and be a little easier to access. Unlike the regular weapons, the boss weapons cannot be modified by their blades and handles. Now, here are some of my personal favorite boss weapons towards the start to mid game. First off, the Holy Sword of Arc. This has a B scaling in motivity, a C scaling in technique. Its fable arts are Patient Smash and Alter. Alter is a big one. I'll show you what that does here right now. So the basic moveset of this is pretty standard greatsword stuff. It has three charges of this fable art. You can either do consume one charge, you can consume two, or you can go for the big ol' three charge. Now, the coolest thing about this weapon is its other fable art that transforms it into this extended version, which completely changes the entire moveset. This is kind of like Bloodborne's trick weapons. Uh, you can also do this in the middle of an attack, so there's a unique switch attack if you do the Fable Art in the middle of a combo. Depending on what form you're in also changes your other Fable Art, so in the extended form you get a completely different one. You get this big multi-hitting combo if you press the button three times. To make this thing you do need the King's Flame Ergo, so... If you just follow the normal progression through the game, you'll eventually kill the boss that drops that. All these are going to be mainline progression boss weapons. Next up is the Two Dragon Sword. This thing scales D with motivity, A with technique. It comes with Link Emergency Dodge and wind of swords so at first you might think just regular standard katana but there's a trick to operating this thing you can actually readjust mid combo to move your character around kind of reminds me of something you would see in like say monster hunter this thing has a really good dash attack it's fast and you do a little leap forward you can also do this flurry backwards out of that you can do that out of a regular combo too if you do regular attack then special attack the heavy attack with this one is pretty unique. You can hold it and actually move around before you initiate it. And also watch when the sword flashes. That's actually a counter window. So if you time that right, you can do a real big hit on that. It's first fable art. You can use it like a dash or you can hit it up to three times to combo after that. And it's other fable art is going to do this kind of short range projectile attack. All the boss weapons I'm going to show in this, you can apply elemental effects onto them. So that's something to consider. So if you want to make this for yourself, you will need the Puppet Devouring Green Hunter's Ergo. It's a boss soul.
Next up is the Etiquette Umbrella. This thing has a D scaling in motivity and an A scaling in technique. Comes with single stab and absolute counterattack. The basic moveset is very similar to a rapier, or if not identical. However, when you start doing the special attacks, that's when you can pop out the umbrella form. Some of those attacks where the umbrella extends, it does have a little bit of a guard window, so it can block some incoming hits. One of its fable arts is this big wind-up attack, and this thing covers a pretty good distance. I would say it's about this range, is the max range of it. Nope. A little bit closer. Right there. Yeah. Its other one is going to be this counter that can block an incoming hit. You can also do a follow-up attack out of that if you hit the button again. If you want to make this thing, you do need the Broken Hero Ergo. And another one of my favorites is the Puppet Ripper. This has a C scaling in motivity and a B in technique. It comes with Quick Upward Slash and Storm Spinning Slash. The regular attacks with this thing are going to be kind of like a farmer's scythe. However, the special attack turns it into more of a whip. The charge attack is going to do that twice. I use that pretty often. This dummy's having a bad day. One of its fable arts is going to do this big straightforward whip, and it has pretty good range on it. Not quite that far, maybe right there? Yeah. Another one is going to be a little bit shorter reach, but is going to hit multiple times all around you. If you want to make this thing, you will need the Burnt White King's Ergo. Good thing I wrote all this down. Alright, so that's how you make boss weapons in Lies of P, and a few of my personal favorites so far. Oh, it's the babies again. Get out of here, babies. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. Hey guys, I'm adding this in after the fact, but in a second playthrough, I actually didn't tell the dog bro about the hotel. What happens then is you'll find him in Chapter 3 at the Workshop Union entrance. He's going to be pretty close to the stargazer in this little room here, and even if you don't tell him about the hotel a second time, he'll still eventually make his way to that corner of the hotel anyways. So either way, you're going to find him in the hotel eventually.